join the fight against poverty in the presence of the Tucuman Mayor. As with every year, the legendary 1987 Dakar winner Jan de Roy came to Dakar to support his son Gerard. The father is no stranger to his son's current leading position at the end of the first week. And he also gave some support to his nephew and Stacy. The truck race started with a bang. Ariad Madayev, runner-up last year, started his 24 Dakar campaign perfectly as he stormed to the overall lead on day one, but his hopes of Dakar glory faded away on the following stage. Race over for the Kamaz driver. In his Tatra, Martin Colomy started the race with hopes of finishing on the podium. The Czech driver had all sorts of upsets, including the loss of a wheel. His time loss, 11 hours. Part of the Vekerman squad, Marcel Van Vliet was amongst the title contenders in the first days of the rally. He was second overall after day four, then he struggled. His goal now will be to finish in the top five. Against the impressive Kamaz and DeRoy teams, Alex Repres was hoping his little Tatra could bother the big guns. Sadly, the Queen 69 wasn't quite at the height of its powers. Lepres is sixth overall. Calm and composed Hans Stacy is in a perfect position to help out his teammate and leader, Gerard DeRoy. Fifth overall, he can also hope for another final podium. But this main concern will be to remain within shooting distance of DeRoy, just in case. And indeed, the battle promises to be fantastic between DeRoy and the Kamaz Armada. The blue team has three trucks putting the pressure on the leader. Edward Nikolaev hasn't given up hopes of a second consecutive win. The Russian is indeed third, one hour adrift. But the real danger man looks to be Andrei Karginov, just 29 minutes behind DeRoy in second. The Dutchman will live one of the toughest weeks of his career. His path to a second Dakar title will be full of traps. Always the one guy is, is going as fast as he can. Um, like Almost like a kamikaze. I, and I don't want to keep up with, with him. Um, and the other two guys, they, they drive behind us and they, 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 put, they don't put pressure. So they are waiting for me to make a mistake. And when I make a mistake, yeah, then they are there immediately there to, uh, to take advantage and to take a lot of time. And with a gap of just 29 minutes, there's a lot of pressure on De Roy. Nikolaev is in third, one hour and seven minutes back, ahead of Dmitry Sotnikov. And Hans Stacy is in fifth, one hour 34 behind the leader. Al Matador? El. Uh, I don't remember. Matador? El Matador? Or the King? A lot. I don't even know how many stages <laughs> I've won, so for Vatanen, I don't know. 18? I'd say 25, more uh, 35, 40, 45, 50, 50, 50 stage wins. I don't know, I was very little. 1970. The year I was born, 1979. <laughs> Tomorrow on the 26 minute Dakar, we'll head in two different directions. The cars will drive their final stage in Argentina, while the bikes will break new ground for the Dakar rally. 
as they begin a true marathon stage into the 28th country visited by the race, Bolivia. Their final destination is a uni, home to 10,000 people and the gateway to the largest salt flats in the world. They're a marvel of nature that will provide a breathtaking backdrop for the second Bolivian day of the race as it loops through the south of the country. The marathon stage has been two years in the planning so the bikes will have their work cut out as they tackle the 768 k's of stage 7. There is a long way to go in the 2014 race yet and tomorrow the Dakar story will continue.